Hello everyone, this is Huck. Today I'm going to introduce our ICAS presentation of decentralizing future instruction with quantum convolutional neural network for automatic speech recognition. And welcome to ICASP. So here is our team. This is Huck from Georgia Tech and Jun also from Georgia Tech, Sam from Blue Haven National Lab, Dr. Ping Yu Chen from IBM Research, Professor Sabato Marco from Core University of Anna, Professor Ma from Georgia Tech, Professor Lee from Georgia Tech. So you can also check our paper here. And we do have a short and tell demo to talk more about the implementation of this quantum computing. And feel free to go into the show and tell section. But for today, this paper will uh, talk more about how we motivate this approach and how it related to speech processing. By those motivation, we will also define our computational architecture. And also we will introduce uh, some quantum convolution, especially this kind of algorithm, how to apply quantum convolution for speech processing and including three different variants. The first one is the QCN RM model proposed in this paper, and also some performance study and more uh, visualization and analysis. And finally, will be an overview and future discussion. So first, let's look at the technology review back to five years ago. So 2016, there is a prediction saying also Although they have a lot of different quantum algorithms, but it's hard to do this hardware simulation and to make the problem more practice. And they estimated in 2019 to 2020, people and the industry was to start to look at to build a commercial accessible quantum computer. And that is the things we have right now. But although we can see they should eventually have a software and hardware conversion and to combine or motivate some powerful module. For example, like the GPU originally has been used for graphic and now most of the research community is also used for deep learning application. But could this uh, same phenomenon happen on speech processing? And another argument could be, okay, we oh no, they do have a speech processing and acoustic modeling application. But could we also take advantage of a recent, more recent quantum uh, technology and design some specific algorithm for speech processing? So by this argument, we can witness uh, recently they indeed have development. For example, from 2017 to 2019, there's a huge process engineeringly. So right now we can have around more than 100 qubits. And for IBM, if you use the IBM cloud servers, the Q, IBM Q-Hub, you can have 65 qubit a real quantum computer. And you can also uh, simulate some uh, quantum algorithm with four to nine qubit uh, quantum computer almost for free. Meanwhile, since this year, 2021, they're starting some development of like the simulation-based quantum computing. For example, we can use CPU and even TPU to, for this tensor process to enhance the simulation. So we have to stay right now is one of the moment we have to really think about the design sound quantum algorithm for, especially for our speech and acoustic modeling signal processing community. But the problem is why we do really need this kind of algorithm and why is the difference? For example, because the quantum data they are in a like different uh, Hubert space. So they, they, they have a large representation and different with the current data. For example, you can imagine original zero one vector, just a vector, but in the Hilbert space, the both are like quantum state that can be a probability ball. So after encoding this ball into a probability measurement, the, the value range will be much rich. So this is one of the major advantages for doing this representation learning called large representation space. And also the data themselves have some good property like the memory 
and complexity issues to resolve the NP hub problem. And more importantly, the data format could be uh, a good benefit to do the data protection and to improve the privacy and some security per property. So let's look at, uh, say we have, a, when we talk about machine learning, we will look at the data. For example, the, the phonomy data and deep neural network model. And we also have this measurement from the physics, for example, gravity wave, and you use some algorithm to do the clustering. But for today, we are more focused on a special kind of this uh, quantum, uh, the classic quantum uh, machine learning algorithm. Because we all know the custody data, they are huge and then they, they do a benefit from the deep learning model. But our idea is we're trying to advance part of the algorithm in the deep learning model by using a quantum circuit learning to preserve some quantum advantage. So called a hybrid model. So here we do some uh, review about those property. For example, the classic approach, the, the input and output could be classic. And uh, the learning model can be really data efficient. But for quantum algorithm, they do have this input and output like quantum format. Like for example, the variational quantum circuit. But it's hard to access sufficient resource. And the hybrid circuit model can access this quantum advantage by a new architecture we're gonna talk in the next slide. And also another uh, concern is, could we really improve uh, some aspect about our data processing? For example, data protection issues, such mentioned in the GDPR and CCPA. So here we produce our architecture. So the architecture is, uh, based on a special kind of federal learning called a vertical federal learning. So vertical federal learning is trying to separate the data extraction and the learning to a different instant. For example, the data can be pre-processed in a one instant and do the learning process in the other instant as data isolation to avoid some uh, parameter leakage attack. So for speed processing, we consider a scenario like this. So first local user that upload input speech. And then uh, by uploading the server, they can do this male spectrum uh, feature extraction by a quantum convolution layer to encode this feature. And finally, after we have these features, like we're feeding your attention model to do the prediction or characterize recognition by CDC loss. So how this uh, vertical field learning actually process, now we have to introduce uh, masses called a uh, random light circuit because we don't really want to have an end to end model in fit vertical field learning. So have a good representation learning in uh, an isolated instance will be important. So now we can convert uh, by N to N, N by N kernel in the middle spectrogram. For example, here is a two by two kernel. And then we feed this kernel to a quantum uh, encoder and do the hyperparameter with randomized parameter circuit learning and then decode with a classic feature. And eventually we'll have feature from channel one to four and with different acoustic feature. And this learning process is called the quantum circuit learning. So in our work, we use random circuit to preserve the data privacy and to improve the protection. But the quantum circuit la la layer could also trend end to end. If you do the parameter shifting, you can also have end to end model as a hybrid model. So you can check this uh, textbook for more details. So by using this kind of technology, you can find out for each channel that do learn different acoustic representation. For example, this they learn the age of the acoustic pattern and also the high uh, frequency feature and low frequency feature by a randomized encoder. So which is quite interesting. So you don't have to train it, but because of the property of the quantum state and the encoding, you do we do uh, to have a sufficient feature to train a model. And if you compare with the trainable neural feature, so it'll say, hey, this one is the uh, figure three B here. You can see the feature extraction is almost similar and after normalization, they do have a better intensity representation. 
but they should also have some hyperparameter and you have to trim. For example, two by two and three by three uh, encoded will have slightly different results. So here is our architecture. We can look at first, we have an input acoustic feature and then fit into a convolution layer, randomized convolution by quantum convolution. And then we feed into the UNAP because they, they can do this scale-free representation learning. And finally, we have a 2D convolution, RNN, self-attention, and then eventually the loss layer and the prediction. So we, we believe and we find out this architecture is good for Lucy modeling task. For example, we evaluate our previous, previous methods, the RNN attention. We find out by introduce this quantum convolution layer, not only the uh, parameter isolation, the, the security perspective, the model itself also have some improvement about 0.5%. And also they can attend a really good performance by using the new proposed architecture uh, benefit from this unit feature extraction. And we also do some different ablation study with different kernel size, like one by one, two by two, and three by three. And finally, we find out uh, for two by two kernel that have uh, quite good result as a future instructor. And consider right now, we can only access uh, a nine qubit quantum computer from commercial using and academic support by uh, IBM QHub. So we stop at the uh, three by three qubits. But we believe by uh, using this kind of setup and the progress of the Hong Kong hardware, this solution could have more and broad impact for different uh, speech processing tasks like separation, enhancement, and speaker verification. And also, we want to see is the model really learns things, right? So we use uh, class activation mapping to evaluate different model trend on different uh, federal acoustic feature. For example, we, if the model trend on the acoustic feature encoded by quantum convolution or by convolution or just a baseline model, and we find out the, the quantum convolution, the model trend on quantum convolution, they do have learned this uh, acoustic feature correlated to original male spectrogram. For example, we can see these uh, really details like uh, intensity around these like uh, acoustic uh, phonomy features. And here is a conclusion. Uh, we propose a new architecture for quantum convolution enhanced speech processing. And we believe with this technology improvement and this uh, field is quite new and could be crucial to our uh, speech and acoustic community as a subfield. And the proposed model show competitive result on speech recognition. So both original model and the enhanced model, they do have some improvement. And finally, uh, this model uh, excitingly preserve quantum advantage on model parameter protection in this federal learning architecture. So we don't have to use a pure end-to-end uh, -end quantum model, but uh, putting this feature in the quantum instance, like we do reserve some privacy and security issues. And, and we, we are happy to open source our implement for more application. And some future direction right now, uh, we, we actually have been done uh, this CTC model for uh, character levels recognition, but we, 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 are, we, are, we think uh, for world level continuous speech recognition, uh, by the pro pro provide permutation, it could be also uh, feasible. And also, we also consider some privacy preserving and differential privacy measurement. And feel free to contact us for collaboration. And we do have a iCloud show and tell session uh, this year also. And thank you for listening. We, we want to have a huge thank to the quantum machine learning community and the speech processing community.